Shalom, 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 Shalom. Peace and grace. I say all praise and honor to the most high by Yahweh. By Hashem Amashiach and Hashai for making this day possible. I want to make it known to the young and answer the old, to the good, to the crooked, that Yahweh alone is God. So all praise and honor to him. Double honor to the elders of Israel, especially my elder Matatua. Peace and grace wherever you are. A great love to the brothers and sisters out there. This is your brother, Yanzania from Awakening Kingdom of Zion. And this video is going to be a video on the woman pastor being an abomination in the nation of Israel. You understand? And uh, anytime you talk of woman pastor being an abomination in the nation of Israel, there's one precept that comes to your mind. Joel 2 and 28. Let's go get it. And it shall come to pass afterward. That I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see vision. This is where they, they talk about anytime you bring this subject. Woman pastor is an abomination in the nation of Israel. It will be like uh, the most has poor spirit on everybody. Everybody can teach, everybody can be a pastor, everybody can be a teacher. Stop it. You can prophesy. The fact that you are prophesying does not make you a prophet. You understand? And I'm not saying it's, it's, it's bad to be a prophetess in the nation of Israel. There is prophetess in the nation of Israel. But let's just see something in uh, 1 Samuel 10 and, uh, and 11. You see? A brother I know prophesied. But he wasn't a prophet. Let's go get it. 1 Samuel 10 and 11. And it came to pass. One of... Uh, this is the book of 1 Samuel 10 and 11. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets, then the people said one to another, What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is so also among the prophets? Is he among the prophets? He wasn't a prophet, but he was prophesying. You understand? It is good to, like, be a prophetess. Prophetess is not bad in the nation of Israel. A woman can be a prophetess in the nation of Israel. And let's just see what the women were doing, the prophetess were doing in the nation of Israel. Let's see if they were teaching and upsetting authority of a man and trying to be pastoring the, the, the camps and the churches. Let's see. Let's see Luke 2 and 36. And there was one Anna. A prophetess, a daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asa, she was of a great age and had lived with husband seven years from her virginity. Verse 7, and she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. So this prophetess, what she was doing, she wasn't teaching, she wasn't pastoring any church, but she was in the temple. Serving the Lord with prayers and fasting night and day. That's said the scriptures. Do you understand? A woman can be a prophetess, but a woman cannot pastor a church. A woman pastor is an abomination. Okay? And uh, I'm not saying if you, you are a prophet, it's a sin. A prophetess you is a sin. You understand? But by what I'm trying to, uh, the point I'm trying to uh, bring or generate is that uh, you can prophesy, but you might not be a prophetess. You understand? So uh, let's just see. Uh, the daughters of uh, Philip uh, in Acts, I think Acts 21, I believe. Acts 21 and uh, 21 and 8. It says, uh, and the next day, we that were of source company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we centered in the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. Verse 9. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. So the daughters of Philip were not prophets. They were not prophets, but they were prophesying, you understand. It, it is the same like the issue of Paul. He wasn't a prophet, but he was prophesying. You understand? The Mosai was using him to prophesy. 
among the prophets, but he wasn't a prophet. A prophet. Salakia. He wasn't a prophet. Okay? So uh, let's just stop uh, trying to teach in the nation of Israel and stuff. If a woman wants to teach in the nation of Israel, there is a duty. And uh, we have a people she has to teach. Kids. And we are going to go there. Okay? Let's just see. Some, did, some say, yeah, uh, uh, we can teach, we can teach. And let's see what the Bible have against those uh, sisters who are trying to be teachers. Upset authority over the men in the camps and trying to uh, uh, pastoring, uh, pastor churches and stuff. Let's see what the Bible says in the book of uh, Ezekiel 13 and uh, 20, 20 uh, and 18. And say, that's here the Lord. Let's start from verse 17 so that we get it clear. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their heart, and prophesy again, thou against them. Verse 18, and said, Thou saith the Lord God, Woe to the woman that so pillows to, to all armholes, and make kitchen upon the heads of every structure to hunt souls. Will he hunt the souls of my people? And will he save the souls alive? That come unto you. So the Bible said, distraction unto them, unto the sisters who claim to be teachers over the camps. When you ask them, they say they want to, they, hey, we're trying to win souls for the most high. Stop it! The Musa say, woe unto you. Have you hunted for your soul? If not save your soul, how can you save the people of God? You cannot hunt the souls of God. Verse 19, let's see. And will he pollute me among my people for a handful of belly and for a piece of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls Alive, that should not live by lying to the people that hear their lies. So, the people the most are skilled, these people they are trying to give them life. The people who are died in the most are, they are trying to give them life. And the people that have life in the most are, they are trying to deceive them with their lies. And these people will lose everything. The scripture say, Woe unto you, verse 18. Say, Woe unto you. When you try to teach, that is why Paul was saying something in 1 Corinthians. Let's go get the one in uh, Timothy's first. 1 Timothy 2 and, um, and 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, not to up, up, or set authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. You see? So this is what the Moses says about the woman. Oh, she, the Moses want all the women of Israel to be silenced. In the camps, in every church service, you want a woman to be silent. He do not suffer a woman to teach or to upset authority of a man. That is an error. That must be deleted. It's an error. You understand? But the, the woman is going to be saved in this. In this, she's going to be saved. Verse 15. Notwithstanding it. She shall be saved in bearing, in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with soul betting. So this is what the woman is going to be saving in childbearing, in charity, in faith, in holiness. This is what you're going to do for the most side to bless you. Stop the teaching. Stop trying to observe authority over man. Let's see Corinthians. You see, that is why Paul, Paul laid out these principles for the school. Because any school he went, you see the woman trying to upset authority of a man. Teaching in the schools. They, they were allowing the woman to teach. 
you know, listen. The Moses said, have you hunted for your soul? Woe unto the woman who, who teach my people, who prophesy to them. Woe unto them, destruction unto them. So this, this thing is not from, from the new covenant. Listen, this thing from, is from the old covenant. They were doing it. The Moses keep warning them, sending destruction unto them. But yet, our people will never stop it. Let's see 1 Corinthians 14 and 34. Let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but are commanded to be under obedience, as also see the law. What law? There is a law that is bounding these women. They have to keep silence, because there are set rules and principles he laid down for the schools. Because any school he, he went, women were trying to upset the authority of a man. As Ezekiel 13 and uh, 17 say, woe unto them, woe unto the women who try to teach, who try to prophesy to the people. Have you hunted for your soul? How can you hunt for the souls of God? Giving life to those who are dead in God and giving uh, uh, death to those who are alive in God. Stop it, please. We plead with you. There are some lesson. We are not, it's good, it's good to try to teach, it's good. We're not trying to condemn you. It's good to teach, but we have a, an area for you to, to teach. Do you understand? We, you don't have to teach in a church service or staff. There's an area for you to teach. Okay? Let's see another precept. I remember there was a church in the, Revelation 2 and 18, I think. And in the, the church of Theatra. Let's see, let's start from verse 19. I know thy works, thy charity, thy service, thy faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered that woman, Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servant to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols you see there is a there is another camp a church they allow a woman to teach to upset authority over the man and the monster said i have something against you why because they allowed the woman they permitted they suffered the woman to teach so the most I say is he have something against them. For them allowing and availing themselves for women to teach to teach instead of men to teach. Let's see verse uh, 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into the into the bed, and them that commit adultery. With her into a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. So listen, those sisters out there who are trying to know, upset authority of a man trying to teach in the camps, please, we plead with you to stop it. The Moses has given you space to change your mind, to repent, come back to the laws. If any woman want to teach, this is how. And this is uh, what she has to do. This is the area she has to teach. Let's see Titus. Uh, Titus, huh? Titus uh, 2 and 2, I think. This is the book of Titus 2 and 2. Let's say it says uh, that the aged man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, impatient. The aged woman likewise. See, so the, the old woman, this is what they need to do. That they be in behavior as becoming holiness, as uh, 1 Corinthians said. 
2 and I think 15 said, in holiness, in charity, and in childbearing, the Mosai is going to save her. So let me repeat that, Titus 2 and 3. The age woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things. So if you want to teach, you need to do good things. And let's see who you want to teach. That they may teach the young woman to be sober. Listen, so if you want to teach, you got to teach the young woman. You understand? The agent, the adult has to teach the children. So if you want to teach, you don't teach in the church service. You don't teach in the camp. You teach the children at home. You teach them at the Sabbath schools. Okay? 